Hey folks, we get to start today by talking about Hyrule Warriors. Uh, Age of Calamity, because there is some new news about the game, uh, specifically when we're going to get the next big bevy of news. Uh, also, some uh, a look at the Treasure Box Edition, which is like a special edition that for now is only coming to Japan, but we'll see. Uh, it could be announced that it's going to come elsewhere a little later. We still have some time before this game comes out on November 20th. Uh, also, we now know the game's available to pre-order. In fact, if you would like to pre-order your copy of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity right now, the very top thing in the description down below will be an affiliate link to Amazon. Uh, if you use that affiliate link to pre-order, I really appreciate it because it does help support the channel and it doesn't add any cost. And yes, Amazon does offer uh, the delivery, you know, day of release delivery so you could literally get the game on launch instead of waiting the two, three days that sometimes it would take otherwise. All right. So that's cool. Now, before we get into the rest of the news, I have to tell you that we have two big giveaways going on. We are giving away a Switch Lite uh, to one grand prize winner and then two Switch games of choice. Uh, you know, well, one Switch game of choice to two different winners, uh, second place. And to enter, down in the description as well, there's a bevy of ways to enter. Subscribing to the channel is one of the main ways. Becoming a, a, a member of Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime for as little as a dollar a month gets you 15 entries. You can comment on the video. You can like the video. In fact, speaking of liking the video, this is a Zelda video. Screw it. Can we get 300 likes on this bad boy? I, th th there's no bonus if it happens. I mean, I guess, uh, you know, like this video or I kick your dog or something. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that's one giveaway we have going on. We're also giving away three copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars in a separate giveaway. There's a Gleam.io link down in the description to enter that one. So, yeah, we'll have six winners this month. Everything announced October 1st. All right, so first up, when are we going to hear about Age of Calamity again? Now, we know September 26th was the date thrown out there at the end of the trailer because Nintendo uploaded two Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity trailers. One of them was one with Eiji Inomu at the beginning where we got a little bit of news on the next Breath of the Wild game, uh, Breath of the Wild 2, the sequel, you know. That we go, yeah, <laughs> pretty excited for that one. Uh, and we found out it's a prequel and all this stuff. Well, then... Uh, we got the trailer part of that actual reveal on its own. Uh, and at the end of it, it said, you know, the, the next time we'll be hearing about this game is September 26th. And uh, we didn't know how it was going to be. We didn't know if it was just going to be another trailer uploaded. We didn't know what was going to go on. Well, now we know that Hyrule Warriors, Warriors Age of Calamity is actually going to be part of Tokyo Game Show 2020. It's kind of important because Nintendo doesn't usually partake in the Tokyo Game Show, but maybe 2020 is different. Obviously, uh, Koei Tecmo makes this game, so that, that can make it different as well. Uh, but right now, it says Koei Tecmo will be showing Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity during the Tokyo Game Show 2020 online because it's an online event only. Um, live gameplay is going to be shown, so it's not just going to be a canned trailer. They're actually going to play the game live, um, and you'll be hearing about things like character introductions, uh, the producers, Yosuke Hayashi and uh, Masaki Furusawa, as well as the director, Ryoto Matashida, um, I'm sure I, I butchered those names, I apologize, um, are going to be there and, and the ones playing the game and talking about it. Uh, if you're curious when the event's going to happen, it will be uh, September 26th at 9 p.m. and 9.50 p.m. Japan time, which for those curious, that is 7 a.m. to 7.50 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is my time zone. Uh, so, I at this point, I am planning to uh, attempt to live stream it. Uh, it's going to be a little interesting because the stream will probably have to start without me um, on camera at that exact moment uh, because my children get on the bus right at 7. But I can have the stream started. I could have... Um, and the, the footage going, and I'll literally join like within minutes uh, on the stream. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be obviously uh, looking at that. I won't be able to understand the Japanese. Maybe they'll have like a trans, uh, English translated version because they did advertise it in English as September 26th is when the news comes. So, maybe they'll have like an English dub version. Uh, we'll have to see on that. Uh, maybe all of Tokyo Game Show 2020 online will have English dub versions. That would be great so we can actually understand close to real time what's happening. All right. So that's really, really cool. Uh, one thing that's also cool, and it's like Japan exclusive for now, is there is going to be a treasure box version of, of uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. It's like a collector's edition kind of thing. Uh, and it says copies of it will include a game, an acrylic plate uh, with the game's art, uh, a paraglider blanket, 
and a metal charm. Now, for Hyrule Warriors in the past, they did some some collector's editions like this that included like the compass. I think that was with the uh, Hyrule Warriors Legends, uh, which is the 3DS version of the game. Uh, and then they also did a, a, a pack at one point that had the scarf as well. Now, I had the scarf at one point. I don't actually remember what happened to it. But it was really tiny, uh, a really tiny scarf. I, maybe it was meant for little kids. I don't know. It didn't really seem like it was something I could use. I don't really know what happened to it, though. I think I lost it. Well, I was moving to my new house. God, it sucks. I hate losing collector's items like that. Anyways, um, so uh, the treasure box launches along the the, the, the main sa- the main game on November twentieth. Uh, the pricing is at sixteen thousand seven hundred and twenty yen, which is around one hundred and fifty seven fifty eight dollars USD. If it was obviously brought to the U.S., I, I think it would just be about one hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, maybe they drop it to 100. I don't know, but you can kind of see in the image. You can see what the uh, the metal charm is. It's, it definitely looks like a, like a little keychain um, that has that new the new uh, guy, <laughs> the little egg guy um, that looks like some of the bigger the the bigger baddies that were originally supposed to be. If you play Breath of the Wild, you know that they're originally supposed to be goodies, but Calamity Ganon took them over. Well, then we have this little guy, which I assume he's a playable. He's got to be playable. Um, so that, that, that's, that, that's really interesting. Um, the, uh, the acrylic plate, uh, I think is, uh, the art, the box art there. Uh, that's, you know, just like basically like this metal plate or like an, that you could just like hang on your wall. Uh, you know, when I first saw it in us, Oh, you know, it's going to have an acrylic plate. I thought it meant like an, an eating plate, like a dish. Uh, but no, what it actually means is like a plaque that you can, that you can put on the wall. Now I'm curious how big the blanket is, uh, the paraglider blanket that's going to have, obviously, you know, it's not going to be perfectly square because they want it to kind of look like the paraglider. Um, that's going to be really interesting. I, I, I want to see if I can get my hands on this. It's going to be really expensive just to buy it, let alone get it shipped in. Uh, but we'll see if I'm able to get my hands on it. I, I think it would be cool. Right now, there is currently no Treasure Box or Collector's Edition announced for the U.S. I, that could change, of course. There's plenty of time to announce one between now and November 20th. Uh, you know, it's over two months away, so they don't have to announce this right now. And typically, when we get like these editions or Treasure Boxes or whatever in the U.S., it's a lesser version. Like it would be just the blanket in there, or just the metal plate, or just the little keychain thing. So. We'll see what happens, but I, I'm honestly uh, really stoked about that in general. Now, I, in general, really love this game. I'm a big fan of Hyrule Warriors. Uh, I don't. It's a game I haven't talked about on this channel be, uh, much because the only Hyrule Warriors game that's come out while this Nintendo Prime thing's been going on has been Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, and we talked about it when it was announced, but I didn't buy the game, and I'm still not planning to buy the game. Because I already bought Hyrule Warriors on Wii U, played it 100%, it beat it, even the DLC, which the DLC added a lot of extra content. Uh, and then, yeah, the DLC for this game was crazy. Of course, I think the DLC for all Warriors games is, is always really jam packed, so I guess that's not surprising. Uh, but I also bought Hyrule Warriors Legends. One, because it included stuff that you needed to buy that game to get on Wii U, and two, it included Linkle and a whole new story that wasn't in the original game. So I had to own it because it was new. The Definitive Edition just took all of that and put it into one game because there was actually differences, well, mostly differences in Hyrule Warriors Legends versus the original Hyrule Warriors because the original Hyrule Warriors didn't have all the same content that was in Legends, but Legends had all of the original Warriors content. It just was in HD versus not HD. It actually had a better frame rate on the new Nintendo 3DS than it had on Wii U. Yeah, that was a thing. Uh, but, you know, now we're sitting here in 2020 and we're getting Age of Calamity, an official prequel, which technically makes Breath of the Wild a trilogy of games. I'm trying to think of the last time we had a trilogy of Zelda games, and it's probably the Wind Waker to Phantom Hourglass of Spirit Tracks, because uh, those are all sequels to each other. Although it's a little weird, like Spirit Tracks is with a new Link. So Phantom Hourglass Link is the same Link from the Wind Waker, and while Spirit Tracks follows it up, Spirit Tracks technically is a new Link. Uh, it's just the you know after they found the new Hyrule that was mentioned in the Wind Waker. So it's it's really interesting because it's a trilogy of games, but it's a different Link. Whereas this trilogy of games is going to be the same Link. We assume the Breath of the Wild sequel is going to take place right after the ending of Breath of the Wild. Uh, so it should be the same Link, same Zelda. Uh, we know that uh, in this prequel, the champions are there, and the champions are present in Breath of the Wild, although in spirit form. 
besides cutscenes. So I'm or flashbacks and memories. So I, I honestly think that this might be the first trilogy of Zelda games that features the exact same link across all three games. Uh, that's my, that's unprecedented. And uh, it's really unprecedented to do this in general. Like, normally when you get a Zelda game, there might be a direct sequel, like Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask or Phantom Hourglass, uh, I'm sorry, Phantom Hourglass following up The Wind Waker or something like that, uh, or the eventual long-term direct follow-up from A Link to the Past to A Link Between Worlds officially. But we usually don't get a trilogy of games, including a prequel. Like, there's no prequel to, to Ocarina of Time that goes through the Imprison anymore, right? That was a huge event that happened before Ocarina of Time that we never got to see, uh, even though we've heard about it. We've heard a lot about it, to, to be honest. There's actually a lot of information out there on the Imprison anymore. Uh, and, you know, we, we hear about things like in Skyward Sword. We hear about all this um, prior community, and it's teased throughout the game with the technology and all the, this whole world that used to exist that got destroyed and, and led to having to, to lift Skyloft up into the air to just save Hylians or the, the people at the time. And we never get to see that. So it's kind of interesting that Breath of the Wild happens and we hear about the Great Calamity and the world before the Calamity and all the things they were trying to do to stop it. And we know how it ends. We know the ending that leads into Breath of the Wild. We know the sacrifice that Zelda makes. We know that Link is almost dead. And we know why Link is taken to uh, the place he's taken to to preserve his body uh, until the time was right. Like, we know how the calamity ends. I mean, we don't necessarily know what happens in the hundred years in between, you know, as the, as the world's kind of, I guess, rebuilding itself or whatever. But we know what happens at the end of the Great Calamity, like right before, you know, Basically, when Zelda makes the sacrifice and Link ends up in the pool. So, we know how it ends. But it, it's interesting to see uh, all the events that lead to that ending. So, I guess the ending of Hyrule Warriors shouldn't be that surprising. Maybe there is a twist to it. Maybe there's something we weren't told, we weren't shown, there wasn't a memory for. Maybe there's more to it. And I guess we'll find out. And it's kind of cool because it looks like we're going to see young Impa. You know, which I guess makes sense because Impa would be 100 years uh, less old, so I mean, seeing a young Impa isn't isn't really a surprise. I I honestly think that it, this game is going to be crazy cool. Uh, right now, all the confirmed playable characters uh, are, are Link, Zelda, uh, Mifa, Rivali, Daruk, and oh my gosh, I'm already forgetting her name. <laughs> you know, the other one from the Gerudos. Man, I really apologize to fan people who are huge fans of her that I'm, I'm forgetting her name. Anyways, and it definitely appears that that little tiny guardian uh, is going to be, that little eggshell guardian is going to be playable as well. Only because in the official art, that guardian appears on the side of the playable characters versus the enemy side. So, uh, But yeah, I'm, I'm so excited for this game. I hope you guys are too. Like, I, I actually really enjoyed the Hyrule Warriors gameplay, and I, I've always liked Warriors games. But I've never been into the whole Japanese thing. So when, when you get like the Dynasty Warriors stuff going on, it just didn't really interest me. But I liked Fire Emblem Warriors for what it was. Not as good as Hyrule Warriors, to be honest. Um, I liked Hyrule Warriors. And I'm probably going to love this because it's a prequel. So, yeah. Talking Zelda. If you guys know anything about my background in this industry, you'll know why I really, really love talking about Zelda. And we have the 35th anniversary coming up, so the Zelda content is going to keep flowing and flowing and flowing. All right, folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.